ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 present The Drive. Welcome into the Tuesday, January 17th edition. Your drive begins now on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan, here until 6 o'clock. We will get your text in this hour. The text line is now open, 304-396-TALK. That is 304-396-8255. And we do have a lot to get into today. First things first, top of the top of the morning. What was the first thing that hits me? Twitter. A couple of outlets reporting that Marshall defensive coordinator Lance Gidry agreeing to become Tulane's new defensive coordinator. And that would make sense. He was yeah, you know, he was someone who um, has some ties there. You know, Louisiana native. And so he's got some familiarity. He has some, some background there. So, you know, that would make sense for him. We haven't heard anything since. Just the reports. Marshall University, when I was on a Zoom earlier today with the athletic department, wasn't something that they were going to talk about. So uh, not addressing that issue at this time. I spoke with sources within the Tulane Athletic Department. I tried to get uh, the athletic department to confirm something for me, didn't have anything for me at this time. So, you know, we're keeping an eye on this. It's going to be interesting to see where this goes. And, of course, I thought the Marshall defense was one of the huge bright spots of this Marshall football team that turned it around in November, faltered a little bit midway through the season, and then picked it right back up. But the defense was always a bright spot for the football team. So, is it a big loss for the Thundering Herd? If if you lose Lance Gidry, is it a big loss or is it a big opportunity for the Thundering Herd? So we'll get your reaction on that as we follow that story. And again, it's 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255 to comment on that or anything today during the show. And then we get on. Marshall football Zoom. Now, I I thought it was a Zoom with Coach Huff. I just presumed that, okay, we're getting a football Zoom. We're going to do this today, and it's going to be Coach Huff. And it wasn't Coach Huff. Instead, it was Owen Porter. It was a a bright spot of of the morning. It was Owen Porter. And the reason we got on Zoom with Owen Porter is because there's been a lot of speculation, a lot of conversation, chatter, Is Owen Porter staying? Is he leaving? Well, the only way you can get a definitive answer if he's staying or if he's leaving is to ask him or one better. He just came out and told us he was coming back. So I just wanted to set the record straight that I am coming back. Uh, We had a great season last year with a top 10 win. And a nine-win season, but uh, to me, it felt like we had some unfinished business in the conference. Uh, I want to win the conference championship. That's our goal as a team. And so I'm super excited to run it back here at Marshall. And uh, we're super excited for a lot of NIL opportunities that our coaching staff is bringing in. So I just wanted to set the record straight. So the record is straight. Owen Porter is coming back. Well, he really wasn't leaving. He told us later, and we're going to hear that, that he never actually said, hey, I'm leaving or, you know, do I have to announce that I'm staying? Because a lot of people were announcing that they were leaving, hitting the transfer portal. He hadn't announced his intentions. Well, his intentions were to stay. So now you have to announce that. So what's a better way to announce your intentions than to have a little get-together with the media and have a quick conversation? So I had to ask him, you know, because there was a possibility. Coach Huff mentioned it last week. There could have been some opportunities for him. And I asked him how happy, not that he's coming back, that how happy is Coach Huff that you're coming back? Here's Owen's response. He was pretty excited. Uh, I didn't know, so I went out of town 
Uh, we went, I went camping with my siblings. We come back, and it was right after Eagle Eye, and Mike had posted their thing, and I didn't have any service. And so my Twitter was like exploding. And I, I didn't under I didn't know you had to post something to tell. I never said that I was leaving, so I didn't realize I needed to tell everybody that I was coming back. But yeah, he was pretty excited. I'm sure he was pretty excited. I'm excited that Owen Porter's coming back, and you should be as well. So we'll talk about that. Our text line again, one more time. 304 396 talk. 304 396 8255. And we've got more of his comments coming up later on this hour. The other big news today, it's been a busy day. It's been a great sports day. I had a chance to catch up with Tony Kemper earlier in the morning before we talked to Owen Porter. So we're going to hear a little bit of that coming up. And Tavion Kinsey, I ran into Tavion this morning. This is funny. So I'm running over to the Cam Henderson Center because I wanted to go and talk to Coach Kemper. He was having his his weekly Zoom. It's also in person, so I wanted to go over and just talk to him for a few minutes and, and catch up with him. I hadn't seen him in person in a little bit. And so I'm going to the upstairs, Cam Henderson Center. I'm taking the, the walkway up where I parked, and there's my guy, Tavion Kinsey. So he, he was looking good. He was in good spirits. And uh, I was giving him the business because – you know, he was supposed to intern with me during my show, but the way his schedule worked out and the way that he quote said he was assigned, uh, he ended up working in the morning on our sister station, 93.7 The Dog. So I had to give him the business that he wanted to hang out more with Bill Cornwell and Big John, Big Johnny Company than me, so uh, he was like, no, no, it's, I was assigned there. And he's a great kid. He is a fantastic human being, and now that he's uh, close, he's super close to, to maybe, can he catch up with John Elmore? Can he catch up? Can he catch up with Skip Henderson? Can he catch those guys? As far as uh, all-time leading scorer, that's going to be a fun race to watch. But you know, something that he is doing is racking up more awards. And so today, after I saw him, I wish I would have seen him after this was announced. Tavion earned his third Sun Belt Player of the Week honor. The reason being, if you look at what he did in conference play, he led the way in the Sun Belt in points per game this week with 23.5 and assist per game with seven and a half. And that was in two victories against Southern Miss and Old Dominion. So now for the third time this season, he is the Sun Belt Men's Basketball Player of the Week. If you look at some of his statistics, dig into the numbers a little bit more, 53.1% from the field. That's 17 of 32. He had a pair of 20-plus point performances, and he's averaging a league-best 23.5 points per game. His 7.5 assists per game lead the conference, and his uh, 38.5 minutes per game also do that. He was second in Sun Belt over the two-game stretch with an assist-to-turnovers ratio of plus three. So if you really want to dig into some of the numbers, how he was performing, he's up there. Not too many can touch him in this league. And he was just exciting to watch this this last weekend, Thursday and Saturday. And the Thursday game, it was exciting. It was a great atmosphere. The Saturday game was a sellout. I felt like there was a, a – both atmospheres were great. I felt like the Thursday atmosphere – was a little different, and that I think is because the students were there. Were a lot of students there, and that just that was a great vibe. And so, Tavion now third place all time in Marshall history for career points, chasing Skip Henderson and and John Elmore. He sits at two thousand three hundred and thirty eight. If I've done my math correctly here. Also, here's a little factoid that I, I hadn't been keeping track of. I'm going to have to now. 12 20-plus point games on the season, and that includes 
a Sun Belt Conference best four in conference contest and four consecutive games with at least 20 points and five assists. So we're watching greatness here. We're watching Marshall all-time greatness here, one of the best. And I asked this on Twitter the other day, and I'm surprised I didn't get a few more responses because it's something to take in. How many of you, and I'm probably speaking to an older audience here, how many of you can raise your hand and say, I saw the four greatest, the four best scorers, martial history, or, or the four, the top four? So I'm old enough, not that old, but I'm old enough to remember John Taft, one of my favorite all-time martial basketball players, John Taft. Tremendous. If he had more playing time, if he got more games under his belt, we might be talking about a different ranking, one, two, and three. He was just that great. John Taft was was everything. And I think an argument can still be made that he maybe is the greatest, but it's a fun conversation to have. He, he in my mind, probably not statistically here, only because I think – he didn't get enough games to, to really put him over the top of Skip or John, who caught up with Skip. But he was just one of the all-time greats in my mind. And so John Taft, I got to see him play. Skip Henderson, of course, another one of the all-time greats at Marshall University. Tremendous on the basketball court. Fantastic, both of those. And I was fortunate enough to be able to – to watch Marshall basketball during that period when you had John Taft and you had Skip Henderson. It was just fun. And then we got to watch John Elmore a few years ago. Johnny Buckets. John Elmore, who has a tremendous, tremendous resume, including, of course, being on that team that won Marshall's first ever NCAA contest. So he's on the short list for the statue, the Mount Rushmore, anything we've talked about in the past. So John Taft, Skip Henderson, John Elmore more recently. I've seen all three of them. And now Tavion Kenzie. So I've seen the top four, the greatest four, scoring, record books. But just honestly, all I need is a big man. Just give me a big man and I'll take my five against anybody. I'll, I'll probably need some bench depth, but I'll take. You know what? I'll just throw him in there. I need a big man, so give me Hassan Whiteside. This is my all-time team. If I just want to actually just go up against you, if everyone was of the same age and youthful, I would have the ultimate Marshall alumni team in the TBT. If I had Hassan Whiteside. If I had, this is just my starting five. It's going to be hard to get in my starting five. But Hassan Whiteside, Tavion Kinsey, John Elmore, John Taft, Skip Henderson. We're going to shoot the ball a lot. Just so you know, we might not play defense. Well, Hassan will play defense for us. But he's going to be our rim protector. Everybody else, um, get open and shoot. We would shoot so much, Dan D'Antoni would come over to me and say, Paul, I think you're shooting it a little too much. I think you need to work it in a little bit. You're shooting it a little too much. That's how much I would shoot with those four, and then Hassan Whiteside just protecting the rim. That's my team. But how amazing, seriously, that we've gotten to see some of the greatest of all time and, and most of our lifetimes. Some of you weren't born, though. I've had this conversation. Some of you were like two or three months old. A few weeks, a few months from being born. And others, I'm sure you vividly remember those days with Skip, with John, John, and now Tavion. So it's just a great time to be a Marshall basketball fan. And you know, I can't wait to see the next one that comes. That's the thing that excites me. Who's coming up next after Tavion? Where's the next Tavion coming from? Or the, the next all-time great? 
we're going to hear from someone who probably will go down as one of the all-time greats, or at least we hope he does. We think highly of him, Owen Porter, announcing earlier today he is staying at Marshall. We'll get more of his reaction to the fans wanting him to stay and his general thoughts on and why he's coming back. Later on, we'll hear from Tony Kemper, head coach of the Marshall women's basketball team, and we'll get your phone calls and text in. Our text line is open right now. It's 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. This is The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Welcome back to the Tuesday, January 17th version of the show. It's called The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I am your host, Paul Swan. We are getting your phone calls and texts in. We do that with our open text line now at 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. So it's been a great day so far for Thundering Herd Athletics. Uh, there are some things that are looming out there that we got to get addressed. Uh, the good news is that Owen Porter announcing earlier today that he is staying at Marshall University. Tavion Kinsey named the Sun Belt Player of the Week in basketball for the third time. But we're still waiting to find out if we get any official word. When it happens, it happens. And when it's, when it's done, it's official. But there are reports out there that Marshall's defensive coordinator, Lance Guidry, is going to be taking a position, same position, different school. It's going to be with Tulane as uh, the new defensive coordinator. So we're still waiting for a, a an affirmative from either Coach Guidry, Marshall University, or Tulane University. So until then, uh, take it as it is. It's just a report, but I'm sure that's that's troubling for some. For others, that might be a new opportunity. So... Take that with a grain of salt. It, it could happen. It could not happen. But there have been several reports out there. University is not commenting on it right now. So yeah, until then, we'll just sit back and wait. We will follow this one, though. But one thing is certain that Owen Porter is coming back to Marshall. And I wasn't sure what the Zoom was about earlier this morning. I knew there was a Marshall football Zoom. Okay. And then when I saw the information out there that um, Lance Guidry – was uh, mentioned in some reports that he was, you know, going to be the new defensive coordinator at Marshall. I thought, okay, well, they're going to address this here at the, uh, you know, at the Zoom. And no. Because, one, the coaches are out recruiting. So coaches are out and nothing's official yet. So there's really nothing to comment on. So we didn't get any confirmation or anything to address this. The reason for the Zoom was that Owen Porter wanted to speak directly to the media and through us get it out there that he was coming back. And if you weren't with us earlier, he wanted to get it on the record. He wanted to make it official that he was coming back. And here's what he said. So I just wanted to set the record straight that I am coming back. Uh, We had a great season last year with a top 10 win. And a nine-win season, but uh, to me, it felt like we had some unfinished business in the conference. Uh, I want to win the conference championship. That's our goal as a team. And so I'm super excited to run it back here at Marshall. And uh, we're super excited for a lot of NIL opportunities that our coaching staff is bringing in. So I just wanted to set the record straight. So the record is straight. Owen Porter is coming back, or he really wasn't leaving. He didn't. He didn't really indicate that he was leaving. So he's announcing that. He's still going to be at Marshall. When we had a chance to talk to him after his announcement, I asked him what it was or what was the reason why he wanted to stay, and this is what his response was. Obviously, this is my home. I love being here at Marshall. Uh, Even if I wanted to leave, uh, it'd be super hard. These guys have become my brothers the last five years. This would be my sixth one, so it'd be super hard to leave them. Uh, And at the same time, I like what we're building here at Marshall. Uh, I love the culture of Coach Huff and BA. And so I don't know if I can find that anywhere else. So he likes what is happening at Marshall University. That's a that's a major statement in itself. He likes the culture. He's been around. He likes what's being built. He likes 
everything that Coach Huff has done, so he doesn't think that he can go find better. And that's a major endorsement, I think, of what Coach Huff is trying to build and what he's doing with the athletic program. Now, one thing that I think he was – I don't know if he was surprised, but he was very pleased about. He was asked about the fans and and how they responded to him and how they were pleading with him or or messaging him, blowing his phone up, trying to get the message to him that, Owen, don't go. We want you to stay. And – I'll just stick with my my initial feeling on that was when he heard his response, he's happy. He's pleased. I mean, it's it's gratifying when when people when people like you and people want you around. It's it's very gratifying. Here's what he had to say. Yeah, it's it's nice to see uh, coming out of high school. There weren't there definitely wasn't that going on on Twitter. It was hard for me to even get a, a coach from other schools to respond, and now to see that everybody wants you to come back. It's it's a good feeling. Makes you feel like you're wanted here. And that's important. That's important. You want to feel like you're going out there and you're giving it your all and you're appreciated. You know, people want you around, that you have something to offer and people understand and, and see that and appreciate that. And I think he's he's finding it from – the coaching staff, and he's finding it from the fans. He he wants to be here. He wants to be in a Marshall University uniform and go out and win a Sun Belt Conference championship. That's a pretty good reason, if you ask me, why you might want to stay. And there had to be some other options, right? We heard last week on Coach Huff's presser that Coach Prime was coming after players. There have been other schools that have made offers, NIL offers. So you got to re-recruit these kids, and you have to go out there and make sure that you're being competitive. And I'm curious what the other options, if any, were. We weren't getting that out of Owen Porter today when he was asked about it. Well, I mean, I guess. I don't know if I'm allowed to talk that far. So not really, but. Of course, there's always another option out there. So he's not saying much, not telling us anything, really. Yeah, you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Yeah, might have been some offers out there, might have been. But we are not going to know anytime soon what those offers might have been, where they might have come from. The one thing is certain, though, you can hear it when you when you listen to him. And the one thing that yeah, I appreciate is yeah, you've got a local kid you got someone who has family. The family's from here. He's from here. So it makes sense. And he also, he talked about that when he was asked about, you know, what was the family's reaction? You know, were they supportive? And he said whatever, whatever he would have decided, whatever he wanted to do, he's fortunate that he's got the full support of his family. I know my family would have my back no matter what. If I wanted to quit right now, and they'd probably be upset. But if I wanted to quit right now and go travel the world, my parents would back me up. They know I'm not going to do something that would ruin my life. So uh, they had full faith in me to make the decision. Uh, They were just waiting. I won't say like everybody else. They knew before everybody else. But at the same time, they just kind of had to wait and wait on me to kind of fill the decision out. Family support, it's right there. He, um, he's not going to go do anything that's going to mess things up. That's, uh, that's probably why he's got the full support of his family because he's not prone to doing things that are I, – I don't want – let's be honest. We've seen kids that have made decisions that you've questioned. And now, of course, a lot of people are going to question all decisions. Some people might question this decision. I don't know who those people are, but they might be there questioning this. Yeah, you should have went somewhere else. You could have gone somewhere else. But he's not making decisions. Uh, He's he's taking his time. He's thoughtful in making those decisions, and that's what I appreciate most when we talk to him. And, of course, something else you got to keep in mind. Go back to earlier where you're recruiting players that are on your team, players that – you're trying to make sure if you can keep them, 
if you're Owen Porter, you don't want to come back and be like the only guy. You don't want to do that. So there's a strong core. There's a good nucleus. There are guys that are coming back, and you see what the transfer portal has been like for Marshall. It hasn't really bled Marshall dry, so there's a good chance that Marshall will once again be one of the top teams out there. And so he addressed how that actually impacted his decision to stay because if other guys are staying, he wants to hang out with them. Those are like friends for him, brothers. They're his family. He felt that they're staying, I'm staying. It's a good thing. And let's be honest, if people were leaving, you don't want to come back and it's you. No, you want to feel like you're coming back and there's an opportunity. And so he expressed that a little bit more when he talked about how maybe some of the other players coming back influenced his decision. Yeah, uh, it definitely did. You don't want to like, you don't want to come back and, and lose all the other guys that are key players on your defense. So knowing that those guys are coming back obviously helped the decision a lot. Um, we're looking to be a top 10 defense again next year. So I need those guys to be there for us to be as good as we were. There you have it. Needs those guys to be there. And, of course, we still have the question up in the air. If, when, we get the official word that Marshall defensive coordinator Lance Guidry will be named to Lane's new defensive coordinator. But, again, uh, that hasn't happened yet. Marshall not addressing it at this moment. I have not got any information from Tulane at this moment on that. And I know a guy there, so we will find out sooner than later uh, if this is happening, when this is happening. But you know, it's an opportunity, I think, for Marshall. If you're losing Lance Guidry, it's an opportunity to bring someone else in. I always look at it as an opportunity. I don't want to go so far and say next man up, but I do feel that – if the job is good enough, the program is good enough, the next best thing has got to be out there. And you want to make important personnel decisions. And people leave all the time. That's the beauty of this. People leave all the time, and someone else comes in and gets, gets an opportunity. You have people go, and if they're not calling you, if people aren't calling about your coaches, if someone is – Looking at your players, you're doing something right. If someone is looking at your coaches, you're doing something right. So hats off to Coach Huff. Seems to be doing something right with personnel, with players, with everyone that has been on this uh, coaching staff for the last couple of years. You know, he seems to be doing something right because, again, if you put it together, other people are going to come knocking to see what you're doing and hopefully – get you to come and put it together for them. We've got your text coming up, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. Tony Kemper also, we're going to hear from him. That's on the other side of the break here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Our text line this hour is 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. Welcome back. It's the Tuesday edition of The Drive. I'm your host, Paul Swan, here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. In a moment, we're going to hear from Tony Kemper. Had the chance to catch up with him earlier in the day. Thundering Herd looking to bounce back after four straight losses. Marshall starting off 2-0 in Sunbelt play and then losing four straight. So we'll hear from Tony Kemper in a moment. We'll get your text in now, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. From our text line, texter says that they liked my idea of naming rights on facilities. Cam Henderson cannot be forgotten. Super basketball and football coach. No, you can't forget Cam Henderson. Absolutely not. I I think we need to, as people who want to make sure names like Cam Henderson are not forgotten, there has to be a new source of revenue. So there needs to be 
money brought in. And how do you do that? Well, naming rights, for example. But I think you can find a way to incorporate things like Cam Henderson. It could be Cam Henderson Center with a sponsor tag, but I think I would like maybe more of a, a pure naming rights deal at Cam Henderson Center Court maybe. Maybe you name the court after Cam Henderson Center. I know you have sponsors on the court now. I don't hope I hope this wouldn't interfere with that. I don't think it would, but I think you have to name the court after Cam Henderson. If you're going to do a naming right deal, naming the Cam Henderson Center or something else, I think you'd have to replace Cam Henderson's name in a place of prominence. Put his name on the court, people will talk about him. Remember how the new court didn't have Bruce Morris's legendary shot marked on that court, and Hurt fans did not like that. Well, I think you got to do something for Cam Henderson as well. And, of course, with the uh, football stadium, look, this isn't a knock on Joan, Joan Edwards or James Edwards. This isn't a knock on them because they were great donors and great supporters of Marshall University, but there are – a lot of great supporters of Marshall University. And unfortunately, we can't put your name on everything. We don't have enough things we can put your name on. But I acknowledge that there are a lot of great people out there. But if you're trying to generate revenue for the university, you have to come up with new streams. And I think naming rights will be important. Now, I know college athletics are a little bit different. You know, you can have a, a booster's name on a building. You can have a, a wealthy family foot the bill. You could have a multitude of donors bring revenue to Marshall, foot the bill, pay great amounts of money to help build things. I mean, you've got the Chris Klein you know, Athletic Complex. You know, we, we appreciate what – Chris was able to do for the university, and uh, he definitely was a friend of Marshall, and you appreciate what Joan C. Edwards did, and you want to find ways to remember that, but at the same time, you got to bring in new revenue streams. So there's got to be a happy medium, but I think the easiest one for the Cam Henderson Center is put his name on the court if you want to look for a naming scheme, or here's another idea. Maybe a Cam Henderson statue. Just a thought. Tony Kemper, one of my favorite coaches at Marshall University, had a chance to catch up with him earlier in the morning to talk about upcoming matchups with Troy and, of course, Southern Miss. But his team's on a four-game losing streak right now. And the thing with Tony talking to him earlier today was the good news is his team's fighting through it. Whatever you might say about wins and losses – the one thing is certain, his team still has some fight. They're, they're obviously fighting. I mean, even we've, we've had some rough stretches in these games that have put us in a really bad place, and they, they are, at some point in all these games, they're centering themselves and battling back, and we just have to make it so. And I think Old Dominion was a step in this direction. Our, their runs were never that big. You know, they were plus five, but so were ours. You know, and um, just didn't play well enough at the end. We weren't very good offensively in the fourth quarter when we needed to be. And now, the team's been in games. Marshall has battled back in some of these situations. Marshall hasn't been outclassed. I don't think Marshall's been outclassed. So what has it been that has really given Marshall problems? And I think Coach Kemper put his finger on some of the problem. They've got to clean up especially the free throw line. They've got to clean that up because that's how teams are winning over Marshall at times. I'll tell you another thing that, that is, it was not a thing for our first, I guess, 13 games is, is fouling. You know, if you just look at how many free throws we're giving opponents, I mean, we were down around 11, 12 a game in the early part of the year consistently. And the last four games were up over 20 every game. And that, when you look at what we're getting beat by, that is, that is a major issue in how we're guarding people. So we've got to get that cleaned up. Um, and, and this, you know, 
this team coming in is going to present challenges because they really put pressure on the basket. One of the things I asked Coach earlier today, if he anticipated – you know, making a change or if he was going to do things a little different here to try to you know, generate some new energy, if he's going to maybe jumble the lineup a little bit, is there something he's going to do different or focus more on? And he talked about staying steady, but at the same time, he's not opposed to doing something. It might even be a lineup change to, to try to create a spark. I've always tried to really stay steady with, with you know, you practice for a long time and you, you put a group out there at the beginning of a game that that does things the most right the most often. Um, but I, I think after a while you just start to look at that, like is that the right decision? And, and uh, I, I still think it is right now, but I, th I think we might eventually try to get a spark somewhere and see if that doesn't help. And um, But like I said, I, overall I, there's a reason why people are out there and effort, energy every day. That, that is why we, we do it. But we've got to get off to a better start. Tony Kemper discussing the reasons why his team are, is in the situation it's in right now and uh, how he's trying to remedy it. But the one thing that I did take away from talking with him earlier today was he's, he's positive. He's not down, not woe is me, woe is us, we're terrible. You know, they got to listen to me. They're not doing things. I mean, it's we got to clean some things up here. We got to do this better, but he's getting what he's looking for, and I think that's promising. And he stressed it. I mean, they might have lost four, but what he's getting from them is what he's looking for. He said they were fine. We were fine. You know, it's just a matter of we were missing a lot. They were making a lot, um, and that was a steady effort for us throughout that game. And. Um, you know, going back to the foul thing, like they took the lead on free throws. They didn't take the lead. It was two teams that didn't make a lot of baskets in the fourth quarter. That is typically the way it goes. It's usually really hard to score in the fourth quarter. And we've got to be better about, we've got to adjust to what is a foul and what isn't a foul. And we, we can't give them leads and baskets at the end that are not earned. That's Tony Kemper. We wrap it up when we come back. This is The Drive, ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. We're wrapping up today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I am your host, Paul Swan. Thanks for being part of today's show. And, of course, if you sometimes can't listen live, you'd like to maybe hear what I had to say, what was going on for the day, you can find me several places. You can find me on Twitter, at Paul Swan. Also, we've got a podcast feed for you. It's The Drive with Paul Swan. You can Google podcast The Drive with Paul Swan. It'll get you to where you need to go. We're on all of the big platforms. That's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts, you can find The Drive with Paul Swan. Appreciate everyone who has subscribed so far. And, of course, I always appreciate it when you listen live. Here's what's coming up this week for Marshall Athletics. We've been talking about Marshall women's basketball. Facing off against Troy, that is coming up 6 o'clock on Thursday. It's also Mental Health Awareness Night. We'll hear more about Troy tomorrow from Coach Kemper. We'll get his thoughts on the upcoming matchup. Also, don't forget, Marshall on the road, the men taking on Texas State. That's going to be an 8 o'clock tip. That means we go on the air at 7 o'clock on Thursday. Marshall, Texas State, here on ESPN 94.1 in AM 930 and on 93.7 The Dog. And then Friday, isn't it good to talk about track and field? Again, track and field. We have track and field now. We can mention that. That's a big deal. The football Players that are on the team really representing for the Thundering Herd. The return of track last weekend, that was a big deal. So now Marshall is at the Key Debt Invitational all day on Friday. And then uh, don't forget swimming and diving, taking on Duquesne. That's going to be a 6 o'clock start on Friday for that swim meet. And then on Saturday, we got a busy day as well because, again, uh, it's going to be track at the Key Debt Invitational. It's going to be uh, swimming and diving versus Duquesne. Uh, it's going to be senior day for them. And then we'll talk more about 
Saturday's action on Friday, but it's going to be Marshall Women versus Southern Miss at 1 p.m., and that's going to be at the Cam Anderson Center Campus Groups Day, and then the men on the road at Arkansas State. That's set for 3 o'clock tip. We go on the air 2 o'clock on Saturday, right here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. So, Looking forward to hopefully another couple of days of Tavion Kinsey getting 20-plus points. Maybe he can win another player of the week honor. Maybe Micah Han Logden can have a couple more double-doubles. That would be something. You know, Maybe Andy Taylor scores 30, does something really stupid from the three-point line. Maybe, just maybe, Thundering Herd wins by 20 or 30. You know, some good stuff there. I would like to see something like that. But... It all gets underway Thursday. We've got the games here for you on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. And with that said, we're out of time. Thanks for once again being a part of the program. And don't forget, on social media, at Paul Swan, you can find the podcast where you get your podcast, The Drive with Paul Swan. And if you're finding me on social media, follow. Hit that follow button. I would appreciate that. And then... Uh, I'm adding new social media networks all the time. And I'm going to be hanging out where you're hanging out. So uh, if you notice on my Twitter profile, I've got my Linktree account linking me over to some new things. I'm trying to make a bet to see which one's the next big thing because I want to already be there. So uh, you can find me wherever you're at on my Twitter account. And that'll take you to where I'm at. Have a great night, everyone. Talk to you tomorrow. WRBC Huntington, W227BS Huntington, your flagship home of the Marshall Thundering Herd and The Drive with Paul Swan, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930.